Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're really going to be discussing the articulations between the 12 ribs and the vertebrae posteriorly, but we will also talk about their anterior articulations, either with the sternum directly, the sternum indirectly, or the last two cases here, which don't articulate anteriorly at all. They're actually called floating ribs. So we're actually going to discuss all that in this video. But the first thing I want to do is discuss this image over here. Okay, So on the left side, I have all 12 thoracic vertebrae. One of the characteristics of thoracic vertebrae, T1 through T12, is they articulate with ribs. Okay. Every single one of the 12 pairs of ribs, doesn't matter if it's the 12 on the right or the 12 on the left, they all articulate posteriorly with at least one of these thoracic vertebrae. And one of the major things we need to distinguish is do these ribs articulate with one of the thoracic vertebrae or two? And to really understand that, we need to understand the difference between a costal facet, which I've abbreviated CF, and a demi-facet, or a costal demi-facet, which I've abbreviated DF. Now the major difference between these two is that a facet is a site for the articulation of a rib that lies entirely on one vertebrae. So let me give you an example of a costal facet. So let's look down here at T10. This is a great example. So notice that this space right here, okay, this is a space for the articulation of a rib. It's going to turn out to be the 10th rib. But notice that this space lies entirely on one vertebra. It's actually on the body of the vertebra, but it lies entirely on one vertebra. Okay, That's a costal facet, and sometimes you'll see the term complete costal facet because this facet is completely on one vertebrae. Now these up here that really go uh, between the inferior part of T1 all the way down to the superior part of T9, these compose what we call demi-facets. Now, demi is a prefix that means half or part. And if we look at this facet right here, you'll notice that half of it, that is the superior half of it, is actually contributed by the inferior part of T4, let's say, and then this, the inferior part of this facet is contributed by the superior part of T5. In other words, this entire facet right here is half T4, half T5. And we only see that when the vertebra are put together like this. If we want to look down here at this one, for example, this facet is contributed half by T7, half by T8. So when you have one of these facets where it is made up of half contribution from the vertebra above and half contribution from the vertebra below, these are then termed demi-facets. Okay? And these two demi-facets, let's say, combine to form the articulation for that rib on the vertebrae. Okay? So hopefully that makes sense. Now the reason that's important is because four of the ribs, in most individuals, there can be some genetic variation with rib nine, but four of these ribs in almost every single person is going to articulate with a vertebra with a complete costal facet. And those are going to be ribs 1, 10, 11, and 12. So this first rib here up at the top, this is rib number 1. You'll notice that how it articulates with T1 is in the complete costal facet. This site right here is completely contained within the T1 vertebral body. And so because of that, this is a costal facet, and you'll notice rib 1 articulates with that complete costal facet. If we go down here to the bottom, so ribs 10, 11, and 12, these are the ribs, right? You'll notice each one of those also articulates with a complete costal facet on the corresponding vertebrae. So for example, rib 10 right here articulates with the costal facet on vertebra T10. Rib 11 articulates with the costal facet on T11, and rib 12 articulates with the costal facet on T12. And so the only ribs that we have in the majority of individuals that articulate with a complete costal facet are ribs 1, 10, 11, and 12. All these others in the middle, 2 through 9, in most individuals, these ones articulate with a set of demi-facets. So take, for example, rib number two up here at the top. So here's rib number two. 
Notice that its articulation with the vertebra is with demi facets, the top part contributed by T1, the bottom part contributed by T2. So rib 2 articulates between T1 and T2. Rib 3 articulates between T2 and T3. Rib 4 articulates between T3 and T4. And this pattern continues all the way down through rib 9. And you see here that in most individuals, uh, rib 9 articulates with both T8 and T9. Okay? So again, ribs 2 through 9 in most individuals articulate with demi facets rather than complete costal facets. And hopefully you understand the difference between these at this point. Now, one thing important to understand about ribs 2 through 9 is being able to predict which thoracic vertebra they articulate with. So the way we describe it is they articulate with the thoracic vertebra that bears the, the same number and also the vertebra above it. So what that means is, say for rib number 5, rib number 5 articulates with T5, but also the one directly above it, T4. If we take rib number 4, it articulates with the vertebra that has the same number, so 4, rib 4, T4, and then also the vertebra directly above, T3. And that's going to be true for ribs 2 all the way down through rib 9. And of course it does not apply to the other ones because ribs 1, 10, 11, and 12, they all articulate with complete costal facets that lie entirely on the bodies of the corresponding vertebrae. So hopefully that makes sense. Now, one more thing about this that I want to iterate again before we go on to talking about the anterior articulations is that in some individuals, rib number nine uh, can articulate with a complete costal facet, which would lie entirely on T9. So you see here that this articulation is shared between T8 and T9. So it's made up of demi facets. So this rib in some individuals articulates with a complete costal facet that would lie entirely on T9, probably somewhere in this region. But that's a genetic variation that is not observed a whole lot. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Those are the posterior articulations. Now for the anterior articulations, we really divide these ribs into three groups. Okay, now this is where I want you to pay very close attention because depending on your text or your instructor, these groupings of ribs can sometimes bear different names. So when I learned ribs one through seven, which I've colored here in gold, I learned them as vertebrosternal. And we'll see in just a minute the reason they're called vertebrosternal is because posteriorly they articulate with the vertebrae and anteriorly they directly articulate with the sternum, vertebrosternal. However, it is worth mentioning that some sources we'll term them vertebrocostal, vertebrocostal. All right, if we go to ribs eight through 10, which I've color coded in blue here, eight through 10, the way I learned these is that they're termed vertebrocostal. That's kind of strange because up here, some sources will call these vertebrocostal. But if you subscribe to the idea that ribs one through seven are vertebrosternal, then ribs eight through 10 are vertebrocostal. However, if you subscribe to the fact that ribs one through seven are vertebrocostal, ribs eight through 10 are vertebrochondral. So with those ribs, just go with whatever it is that your instructor has stated. Now the other two ribs, 11 and 12, these are just termed vertebral ribs because they do not articulate anteriorly. They're floating anteriorly, but that does not mean that they have no articulations because they articulate with the vertebra posteriorly as we already see with T11 and T12. Now let's look at the sternum right here because here we'll see the articulations anteriorly of ribs one through seven. Now the reason I mentioned that, and this is in my opinion a better term, vertebrosternal, is because all seven of these ribs at some point articulate anteriorly uh, with the sternum directly. Okay, so here's our manubrium of the sternum up here. Here's the suprasternal notch, also called the jugular notch. Over here, this is the clavicular notch. This is the articulation for the clavicle uh, medially. And then here's our first costal notch right here. So this is where the first rib attaches. Notice that rib number one articulates completely with the manubrium of the sternum at this first notch. 
The second rib attaches here. The second rib attaches really at the manubrio-sternal joint. So this is a joint between the manubrium and the body of the sternum. Uh, sometimes you'll see this referred to as the sternal angle or the angle of Louis. But if I like this name because it tells you exactly what it is. It's the joint between the manubrium and the sternal body. So that's where the second one articulates. Notice ribs three through six, at least anteriorly, they all articulate with the sternal body. So here's the site for rib three, rib four, rib five, and rib six. Now rib number seven also has some genetic variation. In some individuals it articulates completely with the inferior part of the sternal body, and then in some people it'll articulate partly with the sternal body down here and a little bit on the xiphoid process. So this structure down here which develops actually is cartilage but later ossifies. This is the xiphoid process, or just called the xiphoid. And so in some individuals, rib number seven will have some cross between the inferior part of the body of the sternum and the xiphoid process. So I went ahead and put that xiphoid in parentheses there because in, in not in all individuals does that actually happen. In some people, it'll just articulate with the sternal body. And then here's a lateral view of this, and you can effectively see those articulation sites. And you can see here in this picture, that there is a little bit of overlap on rib number seven between the sternal body and the xiphoid process, but understand that that does not have to be the case. Now, looking at this next picture, what we can see here is that these ribs, one through seven, do not articulate uh, with the manubrium or the sternum with a bony articulation. They actually articulate via costal cartilage. So this cartilage right here that connects, for example, right here, rib two, with the manubrio-sternal joint, this is costal cartilage. It's a special type of hyaline cartilage that gets the name costal because costal refers to the ribs. Okay, So understand that it's that costal cartilage that plays the role in connecting the rib to whatever part of the sternum we're talking about. But to make things optimally confusing, if you subscribe to the idea that ribs one through seven are vertebral costal, the reason they're vertebral costal is because how are the ribs articulating with the sternum? costal cartilage. Again, with these terms right here, go with whatever your instructor says. But understand that there is some uh, discontinuity with how things are named. All right, ribs 8 through 10. Ribs 8 through 10, these do not articulate directly with the sternum. Okay? They actually articulate directly with the costal cartilage of rib number seven. So if we look at rib number seven, this is the most inferior, the lowest of the vertebrosternal ribs. So here's rib number seven, and then just follow my mouse right here. I'm gonna trace the costal cartilage of rib number seven. So it goes right here up to that most inferior part of the sternal body. So that is the costal cartilage of rib number seven. It's worth mentioning in some individuals, it actually has a small connection here with the costal cartilage of rib number six, but that's not important here. So here's our costal cartilage of rib number seven. If we look at rib number eight, rib number eight's costal cartilage actually connects with the costal cartilage of rib number seven. So notice what I have here. The anterior articulation of rib number eight is the costal cartilage of rib number seven. So it doesn't actually directly connect with the sternum, rather it intersects the costal cartilage of rib seven above it. Look at rib number nine, kind of hard to see down here, but here's rib nine. And if you look at its costal cartilage, it's interacting with the costal cartilage of rib number eight. And then if we look at the lowest of these vertebral costal ribs, number 10, its costal cartilage articulates with the costal cartilage of rib number nine. So the way we can think about it is the costal cartilage of 10 interacts with the costal cartilage of nine, which interacts with the costal cartilage of eight, which interacts with the costal cartilage of seven, which then attaches to the sternum, okay? So because ribs eight through 10 have these costal cartilage attachments, whether directly or indirectly to that of rib number seven, we call them vertebrocostal, and that's the terminology I learned. Now for vertebrocostal ribs, eight through 10, this terminology, you use that term if you've used vertebrosternal for one through seven. So I learned one through seven is vertebrosternal. I also learned eight through 10 is vertebrocostal. The reason why ribs eight through 10 are called vertebrocostal is rather than attaching directly to the sternum, they attach to the cartilage of another rib. And the term for rib is costal.
right? But if you subscribe to the idea that ribs 1 through 7 are vertebral costal, ribs 8 through 10 are vertebral chondral. And chondro or chondral means cartilage. So again, we've already used the term costal, so we've got to use chondral here. So again, you have this costal cartilage of ribs 8, 9, and 10 in some way attaching to the cartilage of rib number 7. Chondral cartilage. Again, just keep these straight in terms of whatever your instructor says. Okay? But understand that ribs 8 through 10, they do not articulate directly with the sternum. They actually articulate with the costal cartilage of rib number 7 in some way. Now, the last two ribs, you can kind of see them here, but we'll actually default to looking at this picture. Uh, these are floating ribs, and the key here, this is a good true or false question. True or false, these ribs don't articulate with anything, and that's false. Because we know that every one of these 12 ribs articulates with the vertebra posteriorly. So they can't be completely floating, they're actually floating more anteriorly. So this is rib number 11 right here, this is rib number 12. Let's follow rib 11 around kind of see it curving around here, and you see that right here uh, it does not articulate with anything anteriorly. That makes it a floating rib. Still articulates with the vertebra posteriorly. Same thing's true of rib number 12, except it's much shorter. It comes out here, curves a little bit anteriorly, but again it does not articulate with anything anteriorly, therefore it's a floating rib. And also because their only articulation is the vertebra, posteriorly, they are vertebral ribs. So if you're going to be use the layman's term, you call them floating ribs, the scientific term is vertebral rib. Okay. Another thing about ribs 11 through 12 is even though they do not attach to anything anteriorly, if you look really carefully, uh, they'll actually have a little bit of hyaline cartilage on their tips. There is a little bit of hyaline cartilage or costal cartilage on the tips, but again, uh, they're not attaching anteriorly. They're floating in that direction. Now one more thing before we conclude this video about these ribs. Um, ribs 1 through 7 also have another name. They're called true ribs. A true rib is a rib that articulates with the sternum directly, so that would be only ribs 1 through 7. That means ribs 8 through 12, so the vertebral costal plus the vertebral, or if you're looking at this name, vertebral chondral plus, plus the vertebral 8 through 12, those ribs are false ribs. Okay, they're false ribs because they do not attach directly to the sternum. That's the big idea there. There's something else you should worry about, and that's if your instructor gives you a question like this. How many ribs articulate with the sternum directly? So a knee-jerk response would be seven, but you have to remember they are pairs of ribs. So if the question is worded, how many ribs articulate with the sternum, it would be 14. Because there's two rib ones, two rib twos, all the way down to rib seven, so that would be 14 ribs. You could also ask, how many false ribs are there? Remember, the false ribs are ribs eight through 12, which is five pairs. But if the question is, how many false ribs are there, you have to multiply it by two. There's 10 false ribs, okay? So pay attention to whether or not the question asks how many ribs or how many pairs of ribs. So we have 24 total ribs, 12 pairs. It makes a big difference when you're asking a question, and sometimes instructors like to throw those in just to see if you're reading the question and understand that there is a left and a right side. So hopefully this video, long as it might have been, gave you a good understanding of the ribs and their articulations anteriorly and posteriorly. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.